everyone loves to celebrate, but not everyone likes the same kind of celebrations. I personally love celebrations like modern day Christmas and Halloween, but on the other hand, I'm not a fan of birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and especially Valentine's Day. Pretty much any day where you're supposed to appreciate someone, when you should probably already be appreciating them, yeah, I'm not a fan of. That's just me. But despite all of this, the only celebratory day that I ever made a special kind of video for was Valentine's Day. And surprisingly, that helped the channel grow quite a lot, so you already know that I'm gonna ride this Valentine's Day Poketuber ride from start to finish. And what better way to start things off than with the cliche top 5 shippings in the Pokemon anime. I'm not much of a shipper either, especially not in Pokemon since, you know, most of these guys are like 10. But I gotta admit, throughout my years with Pokemon, there were a few characters that I thought would get together or that I actually wanted to get together. And for most of these, I was around 10 at the time, so you're about to hear why 10 year old hybrid thought that people should get together. Just don't expect any mind blowing Vsauce kind of explanations and expect all the dumb elementary school relationship kind of reasons. Those are truly the best reasons. If you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to hero punch that like button. If you don't, hit that dislike button. Let me know how you feel. Comment down below with your thoughts and opinions. What ships are you a fan of in Pokemon? Share the video around as it helps support the channel. And finally, subscribe and hit that little bell icon if you want to stay up to date with all my content. Now with all that out of the way, let's get started. Number 5. Luck Shipping Brock and Lucy After 8 darn cold seasons of constantly chasing after women that were too old for him and getting rejected by every single one of them, my boy Brock finally found someone who was interested in him, Lucy. And this was before he showed off his abs. Every girl that Brock would go up to would either straight up tell him no or give the ah, get away from me but not Lucy. Every touch, blush. Every word, blush. Hey there, Lucy. Wanna leave everything that you've established behind and travel along with me and three random kids? Blush. Literally, the only reason why I ever considered this is because after all these years of Brock getting curved, man, it looked like he actually found someone of mutual interest. If Brock was ever close on actually getting with someone, it was with Lucy, but of course, leave it to Max to be the combustion block and kill Brock's dreams. It's alright Brock, the community will always love you. Number 4, Poke Shipping, Misty and Ash. Ah, the OG childhood OTP. How naive we were as children. For anyone who actually supports this pair, you can't deny that a lot of the reasoning and hype behind the ship was covered in a whole bunch of nostalgia and that we just wanted a way to make our own childhood crushes feel like they could come to life. Cause if Ash and Misty can get together, then anyone can. I'm not saying that there wasn't any hints within the show that supported the ship, cause back in the day in one scenario, it was heavily implied that they grew up and had kids together, and they were always teasing each other throughout the series. But we all know that the developers of the show just did this cause they had to have something of the sort to keep fans engaged and speculative. Don't the developers for being aware of our hormonal minds. This ship was definitely fun while it lasted, but both Ash and Misty grew up, and it looks like they've grown to be more compatible with certain other people, rather than each other. Number 3. Contest Shipping May and Drew Out of all the very few 10 year olds that I shipped in my Pokemon anime days, this one was without a doubt at the top of the list. May was one of my favorite characters from the anime, so I guess I had to ship her with somebody, but I didn't even need to try cause my boy Drew pulled out all the moves. Seriously, for a 10 year old, this kid has got better game than half the 20 year olds in the world. May and Drew's relationship had a lot of pushing and pulling going on, and I don't mean that just literally. Roses were kinda Drew's thing, but he gave a ton of them to May, and flowers cost money. Either he's a rich boy, or a good part of his allowance is going right to her. Oh, and flowers are also a huge sign of affection, but what's that matter, right? The way they interacted, the way they looked at each other, everything about them made my 10-year-old relationship senses go off. 
Soledad even told May that Drew developed feelings for her. Literally, I don't even know what to say about this one. It's like the people working on the show didn't even try to hide this. Like, listen to this. See, I was just thinking about you when all of a sudden there you were. Were they good thoughts? Uh, come on, of course they were. If I were to say that I ever truly supported a ship in Pokemon, it'd be this one. And considering that I didn't really watch the anime past the advanced saga, and that I don't have any plans to watch the Pokemon anime anytime soon, I think I'll let 10-year-old hybrids stay on the ship for a very long time. Number 2. Rocket Shipping Jesse and James This ship is the only ship that has the potential to go far. Unless, of course, there's like some next level 20 year time skip or whatever. But considering the fact that Jesse and James are 25 years old and are chasing after 10 year olds and their pet mouse with their own pet cat, they're mature enough age wise for their relationship to blossom to its fullest, even on a kid's show. Hey, if Kukri and Burnett can get married, so can Jesse and James. This one falls along the same lines as the Poké shipping, being something covered in nostalgia, and also because. It'd just be really funny and cool to see Jesse and James actually get together. Cause, let's be real, at one point or another, we all wanted it to happen. But the reason why this made it so far into the list was cause, in the manga The Electric Tale of Pikachu, James actually confessed his love for Jesse, and in the epilogue, the two are married and Jesse is pregnant with their child. And the best part of all this is, this was all officially approved by Nintendo. <laughs> Come along everyone! Come along, the rocket ship is about to blast off once again. One thing's for sure, if these two actually became a couple, Jesse is 100% wearing the pants in the relationship. For a quick honorable mention, we have Orange Shipping. Tracy and Misty. What elaborate and sensible explanation for this one you may ask? Because they travel together and then they were always seen together in Hoenn and Pokemon Chronicles. Number 1 The only entry that doesn't involve my childhood. It comes as no surprise that Ash has the most ships in the Pokemon series. But within recent years, Ash has grown up. I, I'd, I'd hope so anyways. And established a relationship with a certain female that goes beyond the norms of a completely platonic relationship and has made the world go crazy. Which of Ash's many shippings am I referring to here and could possibly be giving the honor of Hybrid's number one ship an anime full of 10 year olds? I'm talking about... I'm more shipping. I'm more shipping. Ash and Serena. Do I... Do I even need to explain this one? Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned, cause I got a video going up tomorrow that you won't want to miss. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video, alright? Later.